Good morning, New City. I hope that you are doing well as we gather in house churches for the first time this year. Happy New Year. We're grateful to be able to gather together um, and we're excited for everything that we will experience together in the new year and all that God is going to do in and through us. Um, we are going to have a very short video for you this morning. Um, just a few reminders as we head into the new year. We're starting um, semesters for our house church. Pastor Wamba is going to explain all that in just a few minutes. I just want to remind you that next Sunday we are going to be gathering at the CMU in Winnipeg for our collective gathering, 10 a.m. We would love to see you there. And then the Sunday following that is house church, January 28th, 10 a.m. again. Uh, be sure to register uh, on our website or app. We will be starting our first semester. Again, you're going to be hearing more about that in just a few minutes. Um, and then finally, we're just grateful for your generosity. Thank you for giving financially so we can continue to do what we're doing. And if you would like to give for the first time or continue to give, you can go on our website, wearenewcity.com slash give or give on our app as well. I'm going to pass it over to Pastor Wamba and I hope that you have a great rest of your morning. Hey, New City, welcome back to House Church. Welcome back once again to a space where we are challenged to grow and to become more like Jesus. I hope you had a good holiday season. We had a holiday break for a few weeks there, um, and I hope that you had a good time. I hope you had some good family gatherings. I hope the real meaning and the true meaning of Christmas wasn't lost in everything else that's going on around. Um, I hope you're able to feel a little refreshed. I know that holidays can be a very busy time. I hope you found space to just like sit, rest, and just be. Imagine we're all getting ready to slowly get back into the regular routine of life, get back into things, looking forward into the new year of new goals, um, new dreams, new things that we're stepping into. Um, I don't want to spend too much time um, watching video today. I don't want to spend too much time listening to content today. I really want to send us into a space where we can just like be with each other, have food together and catch up. Like what happened in the last few weeks? How are you doing? What are some exciting things you have to share? What are some hard things that happened over the last few weeks? I want to create space in the houses to do that. And so right after this video here, I just encourage you to actually turn off the TV and like go have fun together, eat, play games, converse. That's the main focus of what we're doing here today. Uh, but before we do that, I want to make sure I give us a chance to discuss and talk about the house church semesters that we're stepping into. And so in December, we talked about how God is leading us to take a step forward in this journey that we've been on, on focusing on relational discipleship. And so we have some changes coming up. These changes take effect like immediately, like two weeks from now, January 28, we're going to start meeting in consistent groups. Um, we discussed this quite a bit in December, and I actually just want to pull out the video that we watched in our last house church session and basically present it once again. It has all the information about how house church semesters are going to work. And then after that, I'm going to lead us into a time of prayer before we send you just into your groups to have a potluck and, and chat and have fun together. But first, let's take a look at what was discussed in the last house church session. Our desire as a church and as a community is to be about the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is a kingdom where love prevails. As we wrap up the series, I want to do a few different things. I'm going to be making a transition here now. We're going to dive into some practical and some logistical things. Our series has really led us to this place where we explore our spiritual gifts. Um, every single time we've talked about this Rooted and Gifted series, we've also talked about how God is calling us as a community to create space for the spiritual gifts. And we've been talking about a support team, and two weeks ago we mentioned or we talked about how we have some changes coming up with how we approach house church and how we do community and discipleship together. We're going to dive into that. It's going to be very practical. It's going to be a lot of information. But before we do that, I want to take you to 1 Chronicles 17. 
this is probably one of my favorite chapters ever. Um, specifically, First Chronicles 17, verse 16. Uh, but what's happening here is before we had access to the Holy Spirit, before Jesus walked on the earth, the way we would engage, the way we as humans engage with the presence of God was very limited. It was very exclusive. God would reveal himself to certain people and only certain people could really approach him. Um, there was this sense of like you really had to go through a process of making yourself pure and clean before you could even enter the presence of God. You might even be familiar with some of um, the ways this played out. Like you had a priest that would enter the temple and if he wasn't clean, if he wasn't pure, if he wasn't approaching this with the right heart, then oftentimes what would happen is that a priest would actually just like drop dead in that space. And so the priest always had a rope tied around him so they could pull him out in case that happened. Um, you probably know the stories, I've heard of the stories of how God would speak to Moses, but not directly to the Israelites. And then God had like really specific instructions of what the Israelites had to do if they wanted to like approach him and be in his presence. One of the ways that God manifested and revealed his presence to his people was through the Ark of the Covenant, which was a, a physical object that was deemed holy. And there was a lot of importance placed on this object because God revealed himself, he made himself present through this object. And so what's happening here in 1 Chronicles 17 is King David, David that was the shepherd boy, David that killed Goliath, David that killed the lion with his hands, has become king. And now King David is actually going through the process of bringing the Ark of the Covenant, this physical object, into the city where he's at. And this is a big deal. It signifies that God is welcome here in this city and in this nation. And so there's a lot of worship that happens after they've brought this Ark of the Covenant into the city. And then in 1 Chronicles 17, God speaks to David and he informs him that, David, you won't get to build the temple that I'm hoping will exist someday, a temple where I will dwell and people will meet with me. Your son is going to do that. But he makes some promises to David. And in verse 7, he says, Now go to my servant David and tell him this. This is what the Lord of heaven armies has declared. I took you from tending sheep in the pasture and selected you to be the leader of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have destroyed all your enemies before your eyes. Now I will make your name as famous as anyone who has lived on the earth, and I will provide a homeland for my people Israel, planted them in a secure place where they will never be disturbed. Evil nations won't oppress them as they've done in the past, starting from the time I appointed judges to rule my people Israel. And I will defeat all your enemies. Furthermore, I declare that the Lord will build a house for you, a dynasty of kings. For when you die and join your ancestors, I will raise up one of your descendants, one of your sons, and I will make his kingdom strong. He is the one who will build a house, a temple for me, and I will secure his throne forever. I will be his father, and he will be my son. I will never take my favor from him as I took it from the one who ruled before you. I will confirm him as king over my house and my kingdom for all time, and his throne will be secure forever. These are the words that God gives to a prophet called Nathan. It says, deliver these words to David. What I love about this passage here is what God does is he reminds David of his past. He speaks into David's future. He says, here's what's coming. Here's where I'm taking you. Here's the incredible things going to happen through your family and through you. But he says, before I tell you about those, let me tell you about where I brought you from. Remember when you were tending sheep, he reminds him of his past. Not with the sense of like, remember how good that was or like to long for the good old days. He reminds him of his past and his history because that has shaped David into the man who he's become today as God is speaking to him in that moment. And it's about to shape his future as well. My favorite verse of all time, if I'm allowed to pick one, it's not John 3.16. It used to be like Jeremiah 1 verse 5. It changed. That is 1 Chronicles 17 verse 16. This is what David says in response to what God shares. Then King David went in and sat before the Lord and prayed, Who am I, O Lord God? 
and what is my family that you have brought me this far? Allow specifically those last few words, this far. If I was asked to like teach one devotional, one sermon for the rest of my life, if I was only able to like preach one specific sermon, I feel like this is where I'd be going. I'd tie it into the gospel for sure. But I think this response from David really captures, I think, a posture where you understand, man, God, you've given me so much. You've done so much in my life and I don't fully deserve it, but you've actually, out of your grace, allowed me to experience your goodness and you've brought me this far. David then continues to share how he's trusting God for what's to come. As we talk about some of the changes that are coming up for us, I want to lead us into this posture. I think what's really amazing about this passage is God is giving an encouragement to David, but we know that all scripture is actually meant to point towards Jesus. The whole narrative of the Old Testament is to point towards Jesus. And what God is communicating here is the son that will reign forever, the son that will always have God's favor and would never be taken away from him. He's really talking about Jesus. And what God is giving is this foreshadow of Jesus coming about. His throne will reign forever. The kingdom of God will be present on earth because of Jesus. That's what God is really communicating to David here. Things that David won't actually see with his physical eye. Things that his ancestors might not even fully see until way later. It's like, that's what's coming. A beautiful vision of the kingdom of God reigning here on earth through your descendant. Not necessarily Solomon or Absalom, your physical sons, but like Jesus who's going to be your ancestor. I strongly believe that there are promises God has given to New City, to us as a church and a community. I strongly believe that God is leading us. Ultimately, Jesus is the ultimate pastor of this church and this community. It is Jesus's vision that we want to follow. We want to hear God speaking through the Holy Spirit and follow his leading. That's not new. That's the posture we've had for the last four years. But what I want to do is help us see how our journey has been shaped in the same way that God here communicates to David his past and reminds him of how he used to tend the sheep. I want to take us through a little bit of the history of New City by looking at our past and our history as a church and as a body and as a community. It helps us understand who we are today and why we do what we do now. But it also helps us prepare for the future that God is calling us into, to step into the promises that God is giving us about how he wants to use this group of people in Manitoba to bring people to a place of salvation bring people to a place where we have restored relationship with God the Father. And I think we do have an exciting journey ahead of us. We've had a really good journey so far. But let's, let's go back. Let's look back in history. What is, what's the equivalent of tending sheep for us? Where did we start off and how did that lead us to where we are today? About five years ago in 2018, a group of people in Winnipeg uh, felt called to start something new. A group of people felt called to plant a new church in Winnipeg. A big part of the vision, though, was not just to remain in Winnipeg, but to be a body, a church that actually expands into different spaces in Manitoba. There was a vision of planting churches, not just in one city, but in multiple spaces. And so we wanted to structure ourselves in such a way that we could be focused on what God is calling us to do on making disciples. And at that time, a big part of our lingo and language was like representing Jesus to people, representing God to people. We wanted to make sure we were set up in such a way that we are free enough to do that and not bogged down by some of the things that might actually cause us to focus on other things. And so we made a decision at that point that we were going to be a mobile church, not just because we like were just starting off and didn't have a building, a big part of our vision was we stay mobile. We don't look into buying a physical building where we can fit hundreds of people. A big part of our vision was how do we equip people so we can actually spread out through the province of Manitoba, bring Jesus and the love of God to people and make disciples throughout the entire province. And so we started exploring what that could look like. A group of people started meeting, there was prayer meetings, and we started exploring how God was leading us and calling us and trying to figure out the pacing that God was calling us into. 
as we were starting that journey, there was a group of people from Winkler um, that previously had experienced the leadership of Pastor Tony and Joanna and were feeling a calling to possibly join together and be part of this new thing that God was doing. And so we took some time and started to discern and pray and go, is this, is this wise? Do we feel like God is saying, let's do this together? A big part of a vision was we want to spread throughout Manitoba. And that's something we saw ourselves doing later on. But we felt like, well, it looks like maybe God is bringing about the right resources, the right people for us to actually start off that way. This is maybe something we're not doing just later on, but we're actually launching and starting this church right off the bat with multiple communities. And so we felt like God was giving us a green light on that. We felt like we had a piece about joining together, joining these two communities together from Winnipeg and from the Winkler Morning area to fuse together and to join this vision and mission of making disciples and representing God or Jesus to people. And that's how New City was born. And so there was culture codes that happened or culture code meetings where we discussed the values that are really important to this group of people that are starting something new. These culture code meetings happened in Winnipeg and they happened in Winkler because we need to move on this journey together. And then in September 2019, we had our first worship service, which is a combined effort of two communities praying, discerning, and then like working hard practically to put things in place like a worship team and a hospitality team and a prayer team, working hard together to make this happen. That's how a new city was born. That's how it was formed. We started off with two communities fusing together to become one. In many ways, I find it helpful to actually view this as a marriage. It feels like two different entities coming together and saying we have differences. We come from different cultures, like Winnipeg is slightly different from the southern of Manitoba. There's things that you're going to experience in Winnipeg that you want here and vice versa. But we feel like God is calling us to do something together. So we're going to unite over the things that we agree on and the things that we feel God is speaking to us both. And we're going to move forward with that. It feels like this marriage, this union, this bond that was being formed. And then we started to meet. We started to disciple one another. We placed a heavy emphasis on our worship experiences. That was like the one thing we said we're going to do really well. We went too concerned right off the bat with like having a crazy small group system. We were like, let's have a really good Sunday morning experience where people can experience God and then hope that people form relationships outside of this Sunday morning experience where they can disciple each other. And we moved forward with that. And it was a beautiful thing. It was an amazing experience. We had worship services on Saturday evenings in the Winkley area, set everything up, packed everything up. And then Sunday morning, the exact same team would then set up in Winnipeg and have a worship service there as well. We did that for a few months and we felt like that's what God was calling us to do for a period of time. Along the way, we started to feel like, you know what, this has been good. And this union, this marriage has been good. It seems like it's God ordained. However, we might have to switch what we're doing practically because this is not sustainable in the long term. We started to see how some of the teams that were present were starting to dwindle. And then we started to assess the fruit of what we were producing through our worship services and the way we were approaching church. And before the pandemic even hit in early 2020, we already started to feel like something might need to change. And so when we had restrictions put in place where we couldn't necessarily gather in the same way that, been, that we had been gathering, we felt like, all right, I think there's an opportunity here to reassess what we're doing and what God is leading us into. It feels like this was... Um, what God was asking for a specific period of time to join together, to do this together, to focus on our worship services. But now we feel like God is giving us perhaps something new, a fresh vision. We feel like the fruit that we're hoping for might be better accomplished by focusing on a different approach to how we do church. And so we took some time as a church to walk through that. This really came to a point when we went through our cry out campaign, this was a time when we focused specifically on crying out to God for help. We're like, God, we're looking for wisdom. We need answers on how to move forward. We need direction. We need vision. Because if we don't, we will perish where we are right now. 
we felt a strong sense of we can't just like step back into the old thing. Coming out of the pandemic, we're like, we can't just step back into doing what we're doing before because we believe God is calling us to take a step forward and do things better for this next season of life and for this next season of this community and this church. And so after some time of praying and discerning together, um, as a whole, as a collective, we felt like God was leading us to a place where we focus intentionally on discipleship through relationships. We looked at this body that God has put together from the two different communities, and then we went back to our original vision of like, how do we bring God and Jesus to the entire province? What sets us up to do that well? And we saw how what we were doing previously isn't really the best setup, so we need to approach something new. And we said, okay, we feel like God is calling us to focus on discipleship through relationships. We place a high value on the Word of God, and we place a high value on like the preaching that's provided, and we place a high value on creating space to like worship together through music, and we want all that to be present, but we felt like we were lacking in being very intentional about creating spaces for relationships where discipleship could happen, where we could disciple each other and not just rely on one or two people to take on the weight and load of creating space for discipleship. And so that's how we landed in the space of exploring what it could look like to meet in homes and houses and create a structure and system, explore a structure and system where the body can learn from each other. This was a big step for us. We were stepping away from what we've known, not just as New City, but for most of us, that's kind of what our experience has been with church for a very long time. It's just going Sunday morning, sitting in the seat, singing the songs, maybe given space to like serve, whether it's on a worship team or shaking hands, but we felt like that's not enough. We felt like God is calling us to even deeper levels of discipleship that extend way beyond just greeting people. We felt like God was calling us to a space where we can be focused on obedience-based discipleship, where we check in on each other and say, how are you doing walking through this? Where we create space for the different stories in the community to be shared. And so we stepped into that in April, 2022. We committed to making disciples of Jesus. That has always been our vision, but we really honed it on that language. Before we said we're representing Jesus or God to people, and this time around we felt like we wanted to just make it really simple and focus on making disciples of Jesus. And the best way we felt we could do that is by meeting in homes together. And that's how we are where we are today. That's how we landed on this approach where we all watch the same content. That's how we landed on this approach where we have different people that would join us in a house church discussion on screen and share stories and their experiences. We wanted to learn from the body. Because we're in different communities, we felt like we have to find ways to maintain the unity of this marriage. And one of the biggest ways we could do that is by taking in all the same content. And so as we stepped into house churches, we felt like we'll provide content for people to watch so we're discussing the same questions. We'll have house church leaders that help facilitate this. But then at our collective gathering, we're going to follow through and again bring up the topics that were discussed in house church so that we can feel like we're on the same page. We can hear what the different house church groups have been saying. We can feel like we're journeying together. Another way that we've been able to stay united is by having leadership from both areas. So if you look even directly at our staff team, we have staff from the Winnipeg area, and then we have staff from the Winkler Morton area that make up one staff team. It's not like there's a separate Winnipeg staff team and a separate Winkler staff team. It's one staff team um, composed of people from the two different areas. If you look at even leadership beyond your staff, our approach has always been uniting the two. We had a worship team with one leader that oversaw both locations. And we had a prayer team with a leader that oversaw both. Part of our vision has always been, how do we do this together? Because that's the marriage we formed early on, we have to maintain the unity of this marriage. Being together and walking together is actually a core part of our DNA. And it sets us up to be able to do more, to extend into other areas. And that's something that we see coming up for New City um, next year and even the year after that, the vision is to continue to spread and not be limited to a building, not be limited to one specific space, but to be able to be the church 
all across Manitoba. And so this idea of meeting in homes is a way that we can do that more efficiently and easier as opposed to focusing on all just meeting in one building. That's how we landed on this idea of house church. Our vision is tied directly to listening and following the heart of God. And as we do that along the way, we've had to make changes. We went from meeting just every week in a worship service to meeting in homes. And then we went from meeting in homes to like having people lead different discussions on screen. We've had different people facilitating leading um, the discussions in the homes. And we're now ready to take our next step. Um, it's very clear to us that if we just stay where we're at, then we're not going to bear fruit. We've taken some steps forward. We've gone from tending the sheep. We've been on this journey. And now God has brought us to where we are today. And he's saying, I'm calling you further into the promises I've given you of having an impact in Manitoba, of making disciples in Manitoba that are focused on relational discipleship. God's like, I'm calling you to that. But it's going to require some practical changes for us. In April 2022, when we committed to this vision, we adopted this vision of meeting in homes, meeting in house churches, we knew that at some point we'd have to commit to having groups that are consistent, meeting with the same group of people each time. However, because we were coming from a period of time in a season where we weren't able to meet consistently, and because we were coming from a period of time where it was like things had kind of been all over the place and we're really just trying to figure out who we are, we felt like it was really important that we move together in unity. And so one of the ways we felt we could do that was by mixing the groups each time. By doing that, we all get a chance to meet different people. We meet different people as we engage in different house church sessions and get to know the community. And we felt like that's the right move for us for a period of time is mixing up the groups. And that's why we've had to register. That's why we had to register each time for a house church and then get assigned a house that we're meeting in for that specific week. That served us well. It's been good. There's pros to that. We feel like we're connecting with more people. It's easy to feel like we're moving together. What happens is even though we're meeting in individual homes, we're really dependent on um, a hub that provides the material and then does the scheduling. Like it's one way of keeping us connected. But we do recognize that if our vision and if our goal is to make disciples through relationships and through depth in relationships, then we're going to need consistent groups. We're going to have to meet consistently with the same group of people. And we plan on slowly stepping into that. And so starting January 28th, 2024, as we step into the new year, we're going to have semesters. We're going to start off with one semester, semester one, where you meet with the same group of people for eight house church sessions. That's a total of 16 weeks in total if you include the collective gatherings in there but it's eight house church sessions where you're with the same group of people. Then we're going to mix up the groups again and encourage people to register if they want to continue to be a part of house church. And then we'll place people in groups again. And this time around, you'll be with the same group of people for 12 house church sessions. That's 24 weeks in total with the collective gatherings in there, but 12 house church sessions. Then we're going to have our summer. In Manitoba, summer is really like a break. Like we go and we do things, we're out at the cabin, we're taking advantage of the good weather, we're traveling. And so we're not treating that as a semester. We're definitely going to have moments where we're gathering together. We're going to have organized services, but we're treating it just like its own thing. Like summer is just its own thing. And then we step into semester three, coming out of the summer and stepping into fall. And semester three is going to go all the way from September until the end of the year. And so that's going to be 14 weeks with the same house church group. So we have three semesters coming up in 2024. The vision and the goal is that we eventually work our way towards being with the same group for the whole year. And so in 2025, we're going to evaluate how things have gone. We're going to evaluate how these semesters have worked. And then we're going to explore what it looks like to say, okay, now you're with this house church group indefinitely. The vision of meeting in houses and homes is so we can make disciples. And if we're doing that well, if we follow the Spirit's leading, that does mean eventually we see even more growth in being able to invite people into the homes. The houses grow bigger. 
our focus isn't really on numbers. That's not who we are as a community. We're not so hang up on like making sure our numbers are like spiking up. But we do want to be effective. And one of the ways that we can be effective is by making sure we're reaching new people and like equipping each other to share the gospel with people in our lives. And if we do that well, then more people will join the community. That's kind of where we're headed. And so the vision is to eventually have homes that are meeting indefinitely with each other. But then as those homes grow, we start to see them split off. As a home becomes too big, we now split off so that we maintain our important value of creating space for relational discipleship. And relational discipleship is hard to do in a very big group of people. We started off as a community that focused on meeting just as a big group of people. And that was good, but it wasn't very helpful in creating space for relational discipleship. And so the vision of stepping into this idea of house church is that we continue to hold this value of relational discipleship as core. And that's why a group would eventually split if it gets too big. We see that being the way to spread throughout Manitoba, to bring God throughout the entire of Manitoba, to reach the people that God is calling us to reach in our everyday lives. And so this is going to be a huge change for us. This is going to change how we do house church. It's going to create a little more responsibility on house church leaders. And so right now I'm in the process of chatting with the house church leaders that are going to run the house churches in the new year. It's going to mean there's more pastoral care that's provided from house church leaders. It also means each house church is going to take on more responsibilities. So for example, up until this point, um, Cheryl has scheduled people for kids, people to teach the kids. That's been provided to the house churches. Moving forward in 2024, what we're going to encourage each house church to do at the beginning of each semester is to sit down and say, how are we as a group going to share the responsibility of teaching our kids? Are we going to take turns? We're going to create a schedule within this house church and see who's being called to teach the kids. We're going to sit down as a group as well and look at who's called to host. So up until now, um, I reach out to the host and say, hey, are you available to host this specific week? Moving forward in 2024, at the beginning of the semester, the group will sit down and a chance will be given, space will be given for the house church leader to lead the group in a discussion and say, here's how many weeks we have in this semester. Who is available to host? How can we create a schedule where we are sharing this responsibility together? The idea here is that as we meet consistently together, we can create more relational depth. That eventually also should lead into us being able to meet and do life with each other outside of the Sunday morning gathering. We strongly believe that being a follower of Jesus, being the church, is not something that we limit just to this time when we're together on a Sunday morning. We believe it's actually how we do life together outside of this. And it's a little easier to create space and bonds for those relationships to occur. And it's a little easier to create those bonds that kind of bring us to a place where we're doing life together. It's easier to do that as we meet consistently together. How can we show up at each other's games? How can we help the people in our community when we see that someone in the house church is struggling through something? How can we then like mobilize this entire house church to help somebody struggling? How can we allow space for all the different gifts in the body to be exercised within a specific house church group? That's a lot of what we're going to be exploring moving forward because we believe that's key um, to how we make disciples of Jesus. So these are big changes. These are key changes. And with any kind of change, it's important to recognize that it's going to take a while to settle into it. And we're not so hang up on how we go about this. We believe this is what God is calling us to do right now. But the most important thing is the value, the intention. And our value and intention is making disciples of Jesus. And our method, once again, is simply there just to serve that purpose. We're going to make adjustments as we go. If we feel like we need to switch things up with the semesters, we will. If we feel like we need to adjust how we equip each house church differently, we will. But some things we're committing to, some things we're going to be very intentional about is creating space for people to exercise their gifts in a house church community. We're going to be very intentional about like raising and training the leaders of these house churches. And then we're going to be very intentional about finding ways to keep us united. 
this new approach to house church will make our house churches feel a little more independent. And I think it's important to recognize that we are different house church groups that are united under a vision, that are united part of a greater community. And so we're going to find ways to stay united. For now, we're going to continue to provide videos like this so we're all tuning into the same content. That's one way we can continue to stay united. When we meet our collective gatherings, we'll often continue to discuss the content that we discussed in the house church. That's another way to stay united. There'll be opportunities to serve together in other spaces, like going to Siloam together, going to Freedom House together, um, stepping into different opportunities where you have different people from different house churches coming together to serve together. That's how we create crossover and unity. As we meet with the same group of people each time, it means there's certain people we might not get to see as often. And we might see each other at collective gatherings, but you might not see people at a house church session like the way you would before. And that feels maybe a little bit like a loss. So there's the gain of like depth in relationships, but it means you might see less people. And so our collective gatherings are going to be key, finding ways in our collective gatherings to create space for us to still interact with each other. But beyond that, I just really want to encourage us that we don't have to wait for someone to organize something to connect with people that we really love. If there's people that are not in your house church, connect with them throughout the week as well. Like find opportunities to call them and sit down with them and create space to hang out together. We are one big community, but we are moving forward, taking steps forward in creating space for more relational depth. And so we are going to sacrifice on the gift we've had of being able to have different people that we meet each time. We're sacrificing that so we can have more relational depth. Um, there is no perfect church model. And I think sometimes we can fall into the trap of thinking we have it all figured out and we have the perfect thing. And that's never going to be true. We're constantly going to continue to evaluate what God is speaking to us and where he's leading us. And for now, that means a significant change in how we approach our house churches. The other change that we're going to experience as we move forward, and this change is going to happen maybe a little later. So semester one of house church starts January 28th. But we're also going to experience a change of having a support team. And we've been talking about the support team for a while in our Rooted and Gifted series. The purpose of the support team is to come about and support the body in ministry. What are the things that God has called us to do? When you look at the DNA of New City, the people God is bringing to this community, it feels like there's gifts there that we're meant to equip for ministry. The role of the support team is to come alongside the church and say, we're going to make sure that we're focusing on different areas to make sure that holistically ministry as a whole is happening efficiently and in a healthy way and we're creating space for the gifts. What we're doing is shifting, continuing to make the shift that we started way back in April 2022. We committed then to approaching something that doesn't lean heavy just on one or two people. We had conversations with Pastor Tony and Joanna about their experience with leading church. And we talked about some of the things maybe that we've done in church culture where we rely so heavy on one or two people in a very unhealthy way. We started making a shift in that. And what we're doing moving forward is continue to make that shift. Um, for the current staff right now, there's a heavy workload that um, is associated with providing space for house church and organizing house church. And that's what we felt we were called to for a while but it's not sustainable long-term. Even speaking from my own personal experience, um, for me, it's not sustainable to continue managing um, what I currently have while also trying to move forward in the things that God is calling us to do. And so the support team is there to help share this weight and responsibility, share the load of equipping each other for ministry. And so I just wanna to continue to ask every single one of you, if you feel like you're called to possibly be a part of the support team, please reach out to me. Like contact me, text me, email me, call me. I would love to sit down with you and explore what this could look like. I believe that as we take steps forward in how we approach house church, and as we take steps forward in how we create structure for making sure we are operating well holistically, I believe we're going to see some of the promises that God has given over us, we see them fulfilled. We've already seen some of them fulfilled but we believe there's more that God is calling us into. 
We believe we're going to see disciples of Jesus grow deeper in their faith and start to equip other people to become disciples as well. That's where we're headed as a community, and we want to do it together. This isn't about building a crazy successful church. This is about building a community and a church that is focused on making disciples of Jesus. And the way we define success is simply being faithful to what God is calling us to. We need the Spirit of God to be leading us in order for this to be something that is effective and bears fruit. So we have to be in communication with God to listen, to align our hearts and our will with His. So I want to say thank you to everyone for the ways you've engaged in this community up until this point. Um, this is a community that I personally feel so proud to belong to. And it's because of the people that are part of this community, people that love Jesus and love God. So thank you for the ways in which you contribute to this community, the small ways and the big ways. Um, every single person matters. So I wanted to intentionally make sure we create space to watch that again and reintroduce ourselves to that information. Um, maybe this is new information for you, or maybe this is um, something you heard in 2023 already. Um, irregardless, I want to make sure we're on the same page. And so we have a frequently asked questions document as a resource that answers some of the questions that come up when we think about how we're approaching house church. Um, this is going to be sent out by email. And there's some physical copies in the house right available right now as well. I really encourage you to take this document, sit with it, read through it. And then if you feel like there's questions, more questions that come to mind, um, let me know. Send them in because I think we can add them to a working document that we can continue to share with each other. I want to make sure we provide enough clarity about how we're stepping forward into this. I'm excited to see how we're all going to create more relational depth and with each other as we meet in our homes consistently. And I'm very excited to see what this could look like in terms of doing life together outside of this space. Registration for a house church is open. And so here's what needs to happen. We need to register. The groups that you're going to be placed in are the groups you're going to stay in for the next 16 weeks. Again, that's eight house church sessions, but 16 weeks in total. I'm excited to see what this is going to look like for us. I'm excited to see how each house church is going to start to find ways to connect together outside of the Sunday morning. So even though I'm saying eight house church sessions, really here the idea is that we start to do a life together, that we connect throughout the week. And I'm excited about what that's going to look like for each one of us. But in order for us to create the groups and to create them early and to make sure that the groups are structured in a way that makes sense for everyone, we need you. We need to register as early as possible. And so you're going to get a few emails this week and next week reminding you to register. You might even get some text messages. Um, this is really important for us to be able to do this well. We need registrations early. Even if you won't be able to make it to January 28th, the first um, Sunday in semester one, if you're like, I won't be able to make it until you know, two weeks after that or four weeks after that. If you know that within the next 16 weeks you want to be a part of a house church, register. You don't have to know that you're going to be at every single one, but if you want to be a part of the house church in some way, please register as soon as possible. Go have fun, engage with the people around you, ask about the holidays, ask each other lots of questions, play games, eat some good food. Um, this is time for us just to like be with each other and connect with each other as we come out of the holidays. And then once again, don't forget to register for house church semesters. <music>